Warning, the books you are about to read are accounts of fictional tragedy. They are all the more tragic in that you haven't read these books yet. If you live a very, very long life, you could not have expected to read as much of the mad and the macabre as you would read if you would just read these books. For you, an idyllic afternoon read could become a nightmare. A fun kind, not the bad kind. The books described this day are some of the most best horror books you can read right now if you would just read them for crying out loud. Seriously. Like for real. to be good books. But there is unseen by most an underworld, a place that is just as real, but not as brightly lit. Books with bad thoughts. Good evening and welcome to a private showing of five books displayed here for the first time. Each is a collector's item in its own way, not because of any special artistic quality, but because each capsules on canvas suspended in time and space, a frozen moment of a nightmare. This is Trevor Jones' Bad Thoughts. Welcome you guys to a very special Halloween episode. Uh, thank you for humoring me through that. Uh, kind of going for a night gallery, Tales from the Dark Side, uh, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place sort of vibe. You know, this was my costume, but I kind of realized I really just more look like a 70s psychoanalyst. But hey, check this out. If you guys get turtlenecks, they double as a mask. Okay, so uh, like I said, five books today, and let's get cracking because we've got a lot. Please be sure to tune in uh, after today's books where we have Acapella Spoken Word Halloween Karaoke. Uh, first selection, something I mentioned uh, a lot of episodes ago, uh, The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This is a huge hit this year, I think. Probably I don't even need to mention it, but uh, for some of you, I really just want to sell it to you. Smart, powerful, creepy. Um, it's like a perfect social commentary. Uh, on top of a horror story that tracks the story of uh, four um, middle-aged American Indian men living on and off a reservation uh, years before they had taken play taken part in a very like irresponsible slaughter of elk on uh, elder land and ten years later they are paying the price excellent at building up dread I was new to Stephen Graham Jones but I'm a total fan now uh, and, you know, really just an awesome kind of um, pivoting away from uh, really bad stereotypes in, in mass media about American Indians. Uh, Stephen Graham Jones, he's an American Indian himself, uh, writing from their perspective and, and also really just like kind of allowing uh, Native Americans their own voice um, where they're kind of caught between tradition and pop culture and they can certainly go back and forth between both um, with the characters. It's a refreshing read that really avoids just like some of the same old, same old in horror today that I think uh, readers and, and viewers are used to. Huge October read right here. So we did Indians, so why not cowboys? Or really pioneers. The Hunger by Amu Katsu. Uh, it's a horror tale for historical fiction fans. Uh, it replays the events of the Donner Party through like a grim uh, foreboding lens where, uh, you know, call it just like this massive exercise in dramatic irony because we all know how it ends. So the, the wagon train is off. They're already late in the year, as we all know, with the story of the Donner Party. And things are going slow, and they unfortunately make the very bad choice of taking Hastings Cutoff. Look it up on Wikipedia. Again, like the previous book, have to pay the price. That's what you do in horror, right? If you're a character in a horror book. Um, someone or something is attacking the wagon train's animals at night. And then a child goes missing. And then from there, a character goes missing. And you know what it reminded me of too? Um, talk about a Rod Serling vibe. Uh, uh, Monsters on Maple Street, 
but kind of in the old west all these characters uh it changes from chapter to chapter um but everyone has secrets and different motivations and you learn all about them and it kind of creates this like sweeping uh uh panoramic view of just all these people coming undone and headed towards a terrible fate that they can't avoid you know if anything what is horror about sometimes it's about fate right so uh really excellent uh fun uh gruesome read uh i hadn't heard of it from a couple years back so for those of you the hunger my third horror pick is just some straight up in your face horror. Uh, call it uh, daylight horror, Texas Chainsaw Massacre sort of thing. Uh, you know, kind of mayhem and terror rather than spooks and ambiance and, and uh, uh, creeps. So uh, this is just chainsaws and people screaming and uh, it's not going to appeal to everyone. I'm not kidding myself about that. Um, but there are some of you out there uh, who I know I just wanted to turn on to this guy. Uh, I don't even think right now the library has copies, uh, but he's kind of a he's built his own fan base. His name's Max Booth the third. This is his latest touch the night. Uh, really bizarre tale for, for fans of people who miss, uh, you know, USA's Up All Night or uh, Joe Bob Briggs Drive-In Theater and Elvira and things like that. This is really in that vein. Uh, not trying to be anything transcendent here. It's just pulpy, schlocky, good time horror uh, stuff with uh, plenty of wink winks, but not too much. Uh, uh, you know, he is trying to genuinely scare you. And uh, I think it's just worth mentioning because this guy has really, uh, he, he does his own, uh, his own publishing house and he's kind of got his own notoriety. So uh, just to turn people on to, I think someone who you're going to see more of and really just his own voice. He's out of Texas, Max Booth the third, touch the night. The next two picks are not exactly horror, Hope that's okay. You know, these mix it up or kind of defy expectations, which, you know, I think is always a good thing. Uh, but the first one I wanted to talk about was After Me Comes the Flood by Sarah Perry. Uh, for those of you who may know, Essex Serpent and Mel Moth. Uh, she actually has a true crime book out too. Uh, a man sets out one day from London to go see his brother and his car breaks down and he happens upon a house and uh, he meets all the residents of the house who already know his name. And I won't say too much more there, no spoilers. Uh, you know, this is really much more kind of a gothic kind of mystery if we can separate that from horror. Uh, it, it really reads like some of the old 70s hammer horror movies um, kind of vibe, but it just, it'll never go there uh, or, or not. And it builds suspense and this kind of off-putting, confusing sort of uh, dread in the, in the bottom of your stomach, but it's just never quite, you know, that kind of gothic uh, sensibility. And, you know, for fans of Sarah Perry, Essex Serpent and Melmoth, she's got this language down kind of a pseudo retro victorian thing uh she's she's really just you know her own creative spirit perry but this was actually her first novel uh so now i, I think got republished to kind of bring it to more people's attention i really enjoyed it um especially if you know you're not really a horror fan but you'll go halfway there check out after me comes the flood lastly probably saving the best for last uh sorry i'm a literary snob <laughs> International sensation Fernanda Melchor, Hurricane Season. Uh, and, you know, this is what I call reality horror. It's, it's, more, hor it's more horrifying than horror uh, because it just depicts uh, in a very raw way the reality we live in. The witch is dead and we have to try to find out who did it, but this is no murder mystery. Profane, jarring examination of um, this fallen souls in a coastal Mexican town, um, just environmentally destroyed, uh, poverty, drugs, prostitution, organized crime, mental illness, um, you name it, all the problems of modern urban life in this like incredibly raw gnashing of the teeth. Uh, every character is at once like hugely vulnerable and sick and, and kind of pathetic, um, but also just full of bile and venom. This is a painful book 
and by that I mean it's it's full of pain. Not horror, but it's a dark book, and that's why I'm including it here. Celine journeys into a uh, journey into to the end of the night. Roberto Bellano's 2666, this kind of a hypnotic gaze into darkness that just will not flinch. And so I, you know, I find it really admirable for a writer who's doing stuff like this. I wanted to read a quote of Fernandez from an interview I found. Why bother to read a novel when you can buy a video game console and be the hero of your own adventure? That's why I wanted to make an experience of hurricane season. It seemed to me the only way possible to communicate that particular story, even if that meant grabbing the reader by the throat and roughing her up a little. But then that's exactly the kind of books I like, the ones that are natural disasters, the ones Kafka said were like axes for the frozen sea within us. Uh, this book is a natural disaster. I highly recommend you pick it up if you're brave enough. Don't say I didn't warn you. And now for some acapella spoken word Halloween karaoke. We're gonna do Bella Lugosi's Dead, The Monster Mash, Thriller, let's go. Acapella spoken word Halloween karaoke 2020. It's astounding. Time is fleeting. Madness takes its toll. But listen closely, not for very much longer. I've got to keep control. I remember doing the time warp. Excuse me, are you Trevor Jones? Yes. I am a process server, and this is a cease and desist letter. You do not have the rights to these song lyrics. <sighs> okay. Okay, so uh, this is public domain acapella spoken word Halloween karaoke 2020. Five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. First one said, oh my, it's getting late. Second one said, there are witches in the air. Third one said, but we don't care. Fourth one said, let's run and run and run. Fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. Ooh, ooh, went the wind, and out went the lights, and five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. This has been Bad Thoughts. Read more with Trevor Jones. Happy Halloween.